Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, if you don't want to hear about a little bit of history concerning what's recorded in scripture and what's recorded in actual history, then you may not want to watch this video. I just did a video earlier today talking about my dissatisfaction with people talking about Merry Christmas and all of that stuff. So I want to show you something. We're going to highlight the land of Canaan and the Canaanites. Now, you guys, most of you understand uh, Canaanites as, for the most part, they would be, many of them being referred to as Gentiles today. However, when Abram, Abram, 75 years old, was told to leave Haran, he was sent out to the land of Canaan. And when he wretched, wretched, reached, no, wretched, the land of Canaan, wretched his pants tense, reached his current tense. So he wretched it, you know, oh God, my wretched arm. Anyway, the land of Canaan, Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of Shechem. Now, there's enough about Shechem that you're going to learn with Jacob and his family, but near the big tree of Mare. Mare, where's Mare at? Anyway, and at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Now, what was the problem with the Canaanites? Why is it making it a point to highlight these Canaanites? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Canaanites had their religious practices. Again, at that time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Why is it necessary for them to highlight? Well, let's read on a little bit further. Is not the whole land available to you? This is Abram and Lot, and there was a problem with them having too much livestock, too many servants, and they were the servants weren't getting along with each other. So Abram says to Lot, hey, is not the whole land available to you? Please separate from me. And if you go to the left, I will go to the right. But if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. And notice this. So Lot raised his eyes, and he saw the whole district of the Jordan, that it was well water region before Jehovah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where the salt tin sea is. Okay? Because he destroyed it with sulfur. Ah, <laughs> salt and sea! You got it? It says it was like the garden of Jehovah, like the land of Egypt as far as Zorah. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Canaanite area. This was the land. This was those nations. It was just called the land of Canaan because most of them were the descendants of Cain. That's where the name comes from. Canaanites. These were the descendants of Cain. Now, hold on now. Most people don't get it. So let's do that. You know, I don't know how to spell Cain, the singular form, so I'll have to go to, yeah, let's go to Genesis, and nope, that's too, too far, but I, in order to get there, I have to go here, so we're going to go all the way back to the fourth chapter, so I can see how Cain is spelled, because of Canaan, because of how Canaan is spelled, C-A-I-N, see, my mind wasn't even thinking about that, but we're going to talk about Cain, so first, um, this is Lamech talking about avenging someone, but Cain says, and Jehovah set a sign for Cain. There are some ignorant people on the planet who believe that the sign Jehovah set for Cain is, pay attention, black people. That was the mark that he put on them. Ignorant, ignorant people. It ain't say nothing about changing no skin color. Ladies and gentlemen, the Canaanites come from Ham, Noah's son. How do we know this? Well, we go to the 10th chapter and it's going to give us, the, well, the 9th and the 10th chapter gives us the genealogy. The genes, that's where the word comes from, genealogy. Okay, so this is the 8th chapter. We've got to go to the 10th chapter. Canaan became the father of Sidon or Sodom. You're going to find it's going to eventually be Sodom. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Okay, so y'all can y'all can know. The sons of Ham were Cush, Merizim, and Put, and Canaan, i.e. Canaanites. C 
کاش Canaan became the father of Sodom, his firstborn Heth, as well as the Jebusites, the Amor Amorites, and the Gerasites, Gerasites, excuse me, and the Hivites, and the Archites, and the Shinites, and the Aravites, and the Zamorites, and the Hamorites. See Ham, Hamorites? Anyway, afterwards, the family of the Canaanites were scattered. So the boundary of the Canaanites was from Sidon all the way to Gir, near Gaza, as far as Sodom and Gomorrah. So when he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, it was because of their practices. What practices was that? Well, hold on. Let's let Abram tell you about it. Okay, because it's more important that he explains to you what was going on. Abram? Now, hold on. There was uh, an issue with children and all of that, but we have got to, because even the Canaanites tried to fight against Abram. Okay, but he says, your offspring, I will give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river to Euphrates. Because the Canaanites covered a lot of land. Here's the only problem. They worship pagan gods. Now, the God I serve, Jehovah, hates false worship, worshiping of other gods, rivalry, people making him into lesser. So let's, let's, uh oh, I think I, I think I just passed it. Nope, not that one. That was Abram and that was Sarai and we need Sarah. And now we go to, then Jehovah said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom, that's where the word sodomy comes from. Because that was the practice of that town, i.e. sodomy. And the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah was indeed great. And their sin was very heavy. And I will go down to see whether they are acting according to the outcry that has wretched me. And if not, I can get to know it. Now, this is what Jehovah is saying. Ladies and gentlemen, he hates certain things. Look, you must understand, he hates certain things. To this day, he hasn't changed. He has already made it quite clear. He hasn't changed. See, Acting according to the outcry. See, he's a God of justice, so he says that he will correct the stupidity. Now, everybody knows about Abraham being allowed to ask questions. Now, it says the two angels arrived in Sodom, and what was the first thing the people in the town square wanted to do with these two men? <sighs> they wanted to have sex with them. The men of the city wanted to have sex with these two men that came into Lot. So much so that after they were struck with blindness, they continued searching for the doorway to accomplish their purpose. Wouldn't be the fact that if you're struck with blindness, you're sitting up there feeling a little remorse and trying to figure out what's going on? No, these, including the young boys, were all a part of this. Go back and read it. It's right here in Genesis, the 19th chapter. This is why he says, it says, so Jehovah sent us to destroy the city. Why? Because the outcry against it had indeed grown great and it came all the way to Jehovah. The outcry for whom? From the people, the passerbyers. That's why Lot took him into his home. That's why Lot stayed he literally waited at the gate of the city. That's what he did on a regular basis. Lot waited at the gate of the city. And when these angels arrived, Lot was sitting at the gate. Why? Because even he didn't appreciate what was going on. This has nothing to do with what's going on today. What's going on today is far worse, but it has nothing to do with that. This is me explaining that my God hates now people are gonna say well the pagans they don't all do the sexual thing that's right they don't all do the sexual thing but they all worship sex gods 
Go ahead. Look at the so-called obelisk they refer to as the Washington Monument. They literally gave it a different name even though it is an obelisk. What? An image of the male penis, the Pentagon, an image of the female vagina. Because this is what man does. Because in our world, we glorify sex. Don't worry about it. I used to be one of those two. Only to understand how ignorant that is. Like I said, he hates it. So I'm going to take y'all to Jude. Oh, Jude. Okay, I need to clear this. So let me clear this out of the way. Clear and all publications. Nope. There we go. Then we go here. And then we go study, and then we go all the way down to Jude. Want y'all to see this because this is not me talking. And then I'm I'm done. I'm I'm gonna have a conversation, but it's for the most part. Jude is not that long. Okay, Jude is not that long. But I want you guys to see this part right here. We're gonna talk about this. It says, although you are fully aware of all of this, I want to remind you that Jehovah, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterwards, destroyed those not showing faith. And the angel who did the angels, which are now demons, that's what they are, the ones who did not keep their original position in heaven where they were supposed to be. But no, they ended up stepping out of their lane. Pay attention. But forsook their own proper dwelling place see they came to be among men they're the ones who had the nephilim these are the ones that scriptures refer to as the sons of god who took on the daughters of women in the sixth chapter of genesis he has reserved what a, a eternal bonds and dense darkness for the judgment of the great day in the same manner in, in the exact same way in the same manner in the exact same way sodom and gomorrah Wait a minute, Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities around them also gave themselves over to gross sexual immorality. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. In the same way as the angels did. Yes, gross sexual immorality, including homosexual acts, these angels. They're the ones who introduced it to mankind. Go ahead. Take your time. Read it over and over and over again. In the same manner, Sodom and Gomorrah, not they in the same manner as sodom and gomorrah but no in the same manner sodom and gomorrah that's where they learned it from people ham told the story to cush look at what cush did to his pay attention grandfather well no it would have been the great grandfather because it was cush's son canaan look at what he did to noah go back and read the ninth chapter verse I believe it's verse 23 and 24 but go back and read the whole ninth chapter and see how homosexuality started on the planet. Now, today, are there people who are born that way? Of course there are. No, no, hold on. There are people who are born that way because the scientists have messed with the Y chromosome and the X chromosome. Removing a line from the Y, or well, adding a line to the Y chromosome, making it an X chromosome, and taking a line away from the X chromosome, making it a Y chromosome. If you don't know, the Y is the female chromosome and the X is the male chromosome. Go ahead. Do your research. You, the information, they've already talked about it for years. They did that on purpose. Now, let's do this. Gave themselves over to gross sexual morality and pursued unnatural fleshly desires. They are placed before us as a warning. Example, by undergoing judicial punishment of everlasting fire. Wait, hold on. Sodom and Gomorrah is not undergoing everlasting fire, are they? Ladies and gentlemen, everlasting fire is symbolic. The scriptures say in the sin, uh, the, in the sin, the uh, smoke ascends to the heavens forever and ever. It is symbolic. It is not literal. Okay, so understand. <sighs> the God that I serve, there are certain things he hates. Everybody always goes to Proverbs and talks about those things, but please understand, he can not stand a rivalry. Give me one second. Rivalry. Rivalry.
Yeah, that's my fault for not knowing the word. One second. Rivalry. This will shorten time because he makes it quite clear that he doesn't tolerate a rivalry. So, Jehovah said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my wrath away from the people of Israel because he tolerated no rivalry at all towards me. So I have not exterminated the Israelites in my insistence on exclusive devotion, i.e. not worshiping any other gods. Therefore, say, I am giving him my covenant of peace. And it will serve as a covenant for a lasting priesthood for him and his offspring after him because he tolerated no rivalry towards his God and he made atonement for the people of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, in understanding, pay attention. So he gave him his hand and Jehu pulled him up into the chariot. This is Jehu and Jehoshaphat. Where is Jehoshaphat? Where are you at, Jehoshaphat? Jehonadab. I'm sorry, Jehoshaphat. <laughs> Jehonadab. Sorry. Um, Jehu and Jehonadab. Uh, there used to be something that was referred to as the Jehonadab class, and that has been corrected. Uh, then he says, come along with me and see my tolerating no rivalry towards Jehovah. So, understand, he will not stomach anyone pinning him with any one else, any other God, rendered zeal, may convey such a meaning as insistence on exclusive devotion, tolerating no rivalry. And this is the zeal for your house will eat me up, referring to Jesus when he went into the temple and threw out those money changers. Tear down this temple and in three days I will raise it up. That is that section. Now, why am I showing you all this? Because I want you to understand where I come from. So let's do this. We're going to step away from the rivalry part because now you understand that he says he demands, commands exclusive devotion. So what we're going to do is we're going to do K-A-R-M-A. -A. Oh. Or Rigen. Uh oh, it Google don't like me, y'all. And it's not Google. Which one is this? It just Google. Give me a second. I gotta correct something. Okay, this is what you guys need to understand. Karma found within many forms of Indian religion, including Buddhism, Hinduism, and Jainism. Okay, means action. It is linked to a system of cause and effect and well-being a factor of rebirth. Ladies and gentlemen, it deals with, pay attention, reincarnation. It is religious. It has nothing to do with cause and effect. Okay, cause and effect is another way for saying you reap what you sow. Karma is not created by God. Karma is based on a pagan belief. Okay, now you see that none of the rest of these talk about the religious aspect of it, but all the other ones do. Now you do hear early Hindu texts uh, and so forth. Okay, but you don't hear, oh, there you go, some Eastern religions. Okay, so this one actually lets you know it comes from religion. Now what is a pagan? Let's do this. So that you guys understand P G N. And we don't want paganism. Paganism is a religion. Anywhere with I S M on it is belief, religion. Meaning not Judeo Christian. Okay? And technically they were called Gentiles prior to that. And then prior to that, they were called Canaanites or people of the nations because God's people were to be separate from the people of the nations. 
Now, one final one. This is important. Oh, I forgot the Christ part. I forgot the T. But let's do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna click here. Christian origins pagan. I just wanna. I'm gonna click there. It is commonly believed that the church crossed this date in an effort to adopt. See who is this? History.com. First called the Feast of Nativity. The custom spread to Egypt in 432 in England and the end of the sixth century. No, that ain't doing that. That the History.com is not helping. Was Christian originally a pagan tradition? Though December 25th is the day Christmas is celebrated on as the birth of Christ, the date itself and several customs we've come to associate with Christmas actually evolved from pagan traditions celebrating the winter solstice. Again, this is CBS Morning News. People, I didn't have to go to CBS Morning News. My mother bought the encyclopedia when I was younger. I could look up the origins of all this stuff, and I did. Why would I want to be celebrating the winter solstice as if the sun is a god? Oh, I'm sorry, Amun-Ra. Because the, there were so many darker days, the, the, there were less daylight, so they waited, and January 6th was the original day that Christmas was celebrated on. But they switched it to the winter solstice because of all the other pagan religions that observed the winter solstice. And they combined the two, i.e. the whole world's now celebrating. Now, if you really want to get this, watch this. C-H-I-N-A. Uh -uh, we don't want China pagan. We, we're not doing that. Okay. Sorry, it I I there it is, commercialism. Remember China said that it did not want to become like the Imperial West. They were not going to do the commercialism. <sighs> now China is so heavily involved in commerce. That's all you see in China. The United States created China. So uh, watch this. I'm going to ask this question. I'm not going to go to perplexity. Doc. Well, no, let's go to perplexity. Forget that. Perplexity.ai, and I hope I spelled it right, because I've been having the spelling time this morning. Like I said, I've been distracted. W-H-E-R-E -E did I-N-D India no, I'm not capitalizing that. I just want to know where did, oh, where did India get its nuclear technology? India has been developing nuclear technology since the 1970s. It is estimated that 160 nuclear weapons and produced enough war grade plutonium for up to 200. India's nuclear arsenal can be delivered by aircraft or land-based missiles. Ladies and gentlemen, where did India get its nuclear technology? Come on, talk to me. I guarantee you India got its nuclear technology from the United States. Why? Because of China. Why? And Russia. Because the United States needed an ally on that side of the world. That's why to this day, India and the United States are allies. But, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold on. This, this, is the, this is the kicker. I hope I spelled that right. If I didn't, it should correct me. Well, Pakistan began its nuclear efforts in the 1950s as an energy program prompted by the United States. Ta-da! And guess what? India and Pakistan are enemies. That's what the United States did. Ta-da! Russia gave it to China. China gave it to North Korea and other countries. This is what's going on in our world. That's why there has to be change. It can't continue to be this way. 
Now look, some of you guys are not paying attention to what's going on. So, C-H-I-N-A-R-I-S-E-I-N-C-O-V-I-D. Now this is recent. They have 2,283 cases per day, but we know that that number is not correct. That everybody said they needed to open up, need to let them people, let my people go. Okay. They say it has decreased 94% from the average. This is 2021. Now, when they had the lockdown, yes, it decreased, but not no more. Every new infection offers a chance for coronavirus to mutate, and the virus is spreading rapidly in China. A country of 1.4 billion has largely abandoned its zero COVID policy. Now the numbers are increasing. This is 12, 2022. When those cases get out of hand, eventually it's going to spread. It's not me that's saying this. They say that it's going to mutate and spread. Now they're giving it Omicron, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, giving it all kind of letters now because they can't come up with any more stupid names. You can only have so many Greek gods. So ladies and gentlemen, this is winter time. China's in the Northern Hemisphere. This is winter time. It's about to get ugly. Y'all need to be prepared. If you haven't been stocking up, yeah, supposed to doing all the so-called wannabe Christ mass shopping. Start stocking up on supplies, people. Perishables. Don't do the perishables. Get the food that is non-perishable. The food that will last a year. And get more than enough. Get more than enough for now. Go ahead and start stocking up on toilet paper. Start stocking up on everything you saw there was a shortage of because there will be a shortage again. And now is a perfect time to stock up. Now, if it gets bad the way we're assuming it will get, that means that eventually the sewer system will not work. So prepare for that. Some of you guys, there are port a pots that you can buy that are for camping. No, let's do it down here. C A M P I N G P O R T. Uh oh, it ain't typing in. And I know I just type. Uh oh, it don't want me typing, y'all. Nope, it said you ain't typing that in there. I don't care who you is. Real simple to use. This one right here, this is, they're the same, not the same, but they're the same. Okay? And there are certain chemicals you can use to where you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, I have one of these, by the way. I just remembered <laughs> because it's just sitting there. Never used it, but I have it nonetheless. Okay? Why? Well, I, I live in a vehicle that already has its own septic. And so I don't really have to worry about that, but... Technically, there will be some people, you know, and I may have to get up and get on and get out. And if that's the case, then that could create a problem. You, 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 you feels me? I feel for you. So, ladies and gentlemen, the only reason why I tell you that is because of this. Yeah, we're just going to go there. Sorry, I just had a neighbor drive by. We have a situation where there are some pit bulls that are wild. And 
uh, one of the neighbors tells me that these pit bulls have had a habit of killing other people's dogs and not only killing other people's dogs, but also they were attacking a cow, a bull, and earlier today. And by the throat, by the ear, by the neck. Uh, two of them. One of them doing most of the attacking because he had his taste of blood. And the cow trying, I had to stop because I couldn't proceed without hitting the cow. The cow was trying to brush up against the vehicle, the truck, and it brushed up against the side of the vehicle and broke the mirror. That was my experience this morning. Not a bad thing. I, that mirror, I can replace that mirror. That's not a big deal. Um, that's a simple thing because I got to replace a couple of things on the truck anyway. But what they did to that cow, uh, yeah. And there was nothing we could do about it. The guy was talking about killing the dogs and I'm like, no, I know those dogs. I've seen those dogs before. Those dogs, yeah, if one of them attacks the other one, it's going to attack. So we take the chance. So he wanted to go ahead and get his gun and show them, go ahead and attack this. But, you know. I left them be because I couldn't worry about that. It's not my, the guy who raises pit bulls around here, gave them to a neighbor and somebody let them go. And so now they are feral. <laughs> okay. Anyway, pay attention to this. If you don't mind in those days, our day now, so in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom, the one that Jesus kept talking about, that will never be destroyed. And this kingdom, meaning king dominated, will not be passed on to any other people. And so you ain't got to worry about no new king or no new president or anything like that. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms or governments of this world. And it alone will stand forever. That's what people, when they pray the so-called Lord's Prayer, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, if you art in heaven. Thy kingdom come. This is the kingdom they're praying for. It says, just as you saw a mountain, or excuse me, out of the mountain a stone was cut, not by hands, and that it crushed the iron and the copper and the clay and the silver and the gold the grand god has made known to the king king nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future the dream and its interpretation is trustworthy ladies and gentlemen this is his promise to set up a kingdom a rulership over the earth where all of these problems we're having today are gone we're living in those last days before this happens, before that time where he destroys all of these kingdoms that are existing today. If you pay attention to the Avengers, that's what it claims they're preparing for. They actually think that they can manage a battle. They actually think that they can handle this battle. That's why they put nuclear weapons in space. Ladies and gentlemen, they put nuclear weapons. Oh, you guys didn't know? Oh, yeah, they, they have nuclear weapons on the space, the International Space Station. People say, oh, that's for just in case an asteroid. When was the last time an asteroid hit this Earth? Well, they say 575 quadzillion billion years ago. Really? An asteroid hit the planet Earth? Really? How many years ago, they say? Okay, well, then how come the Earth wasn't knocked off its axis or its rotation around the sun by the way if that had happened it would have made life un or impossible would have made the earth uninhabitable if the earth had been thrown off by even a millisecond of a degree because it would have either made it too hot or too cold to sustain life us so that right there is stupid for people to believe because they believe it because just they hear it, but they don't think about what's being said. That an asteroid, do you know how big an asteroid is? Well, and that's why the Earth had a big, huge blanket over it, and it suffocated everything on the Earth, and everything died. <laughs> yep, everything died. Really. But they show you no proof of this. They just say that they theorized it. 
and we believe them. No, they have nuclear weapons in space because they know that there is an attack coming from outer space. Go ahead and look at the Avengers when Loki, you know the one where Loki, at the beginning of the movie, Loki walks out of a portal parallel to the Earth. And then at the end of the movie, you see the beings coming from a different dimension, heaven. They are coming from the heavens. They're coming from a different dimension. And the Avengers is going to save the day. They're preparing for that battle. Now, if you go back and watch the movie, then you'll start to see what they are trying to tell you. And look, the God of the heavens created the sun. So how are they going to use nuclear technology against him? Or Jesus and the angels that come with him? Because that's whom they're going to be battling with. If you don't believe me, those of you who have a Bible, go back and look up what you see me pointing out. Don't take my word for it. Don't even take my explanation for it. Go back and read the context and see if that's not what it's talking about. Now we're going to go here and then we're going to put a nine after the one. Nine. That's going to take us here. Now when we get here, it says, and I saw the heavens look, open up and look a white horse and the one seated upon it was called faithful and true. If you go back to the first chapter, you see that faithful and true person is Jesus. I think it's one verse three or one verse five. It says in Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. Okay, and then the true part, right here. And the word became flesh and lived among us. Okay, that's the Jesus. Well, anyway, let's continue. And he judges and carries on war and righteousness. His eyes are fire and flame, and on his head are many diadems. Ladies and gentlemen, diadems, a sign of um, royalty. Okay, it's a headdress, like a crown. But it's not the crown itself. It's the little things on the crown that shows that person is a king. Like kings used to have. He has a name written that no one else knows but himself. And he is clothed in a white outer garment. Stained with blood. Why? Because he carries on war and wages war and righteousness. And he is called by the name the word of God. Okay. But it says that. These things, the angel standing in the sun, the same one in the white, or no, no, sorry, that's not the one in the white, the one in the, on the horse. In other words, the angel standing in the sun, he cried out with a loud voice, and he said to the birds that fly in mid heavens, come and hear and be gathered to the great evening meal of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, presidents, ministers, prime or otherwise, and the flesh of military commanders, generals, commanders four star and fifth stars and chiefs of commanding armies and the flesh of the strong men those who decide they want to fight in the moms and the flesh of the horses the in this day the horses are their military equipment the vehicles the planes that type of thing and of those seated upon them and the flesh of all the freemen as well as the slaves, the small and the great. It's called the Great Feast or the Great Evening Meal of Jehovah. This is what they're preparing for. Go ahead, go back and watch the Avengers and then reread this right here and see if that's not what they're preparing for. Look at how they tried to use missiles and nuclear weapons against those creatures coming. Hey, I didn't make the movie. But you know they always show you so that you can't sit up there and say, I didn't know. Nobody told me. Okay. <sighs> so back to the reason for this video. Sorry, I got to do the auto ram clean if it's going to let me because I need to do that instead of doing it. I don't want to go pro. I'm already pro. I got to put the key in again. Um, ladies and gentlemen. It works like this, and it really is this simple. Everybody makes up an excuse. I don't have excuses. It's either I serve Jehovah or I don't. Now, hold on. You shouldn't have an excuse either. It's either you're serving Jehovah or you're not. So if he says don't do something, are you doing it? 
If he says stop doing something, are you stopping? If he says you got to try harder, are you trying harder? If he says do not worship any other gods but me, are you obeying? You see, that's what it boils down to. It has nothing to do with who I am and what I suggest and what uh -uh. I choose to serve him the way he requires, not the way I want to serve him. I don't get that's not my choice as to how I want to serve him. Everybody talk about free will. Free will is right, do whatever you want. No, 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 no. There is no free will. He never gave us free will. He gave us go back and watch the Matrix, because they had it right on the money. Neil and the architect. They gave he gave us choice, ladies and gentlemen. He gave us the right to choose. We could choose to live or to die. That's what Moses told the Israelites. That's the final one. Then I'm going to let y'all go on about your business so that you'll know it's always been about choice. It has never been about free will. Why am I saying that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, for this reason, if it was free will, that means you could do whatever you want and there could be no consequences. If it was free will, you could do whatever you want and there could be no consequences because it's free. You cannot have something that's free if there is a consequence. Did I say 28? Yeah, that I had it right. Come on, duty. Deuteronomy. Oh, I put 28 in too soon. Okay, that's what the problem was. Vente Ocho. All right. Now, Moses sat up here and he talked about the people and he was letting them know at the very end of his life. And he told them what they needed to do. Okay. And he gave the people, he says, hey, y'all, here is what y'all need to understand. And the people said, all right. But see, he says, there you will serve other gods. He told them what they were going to do. There you would serve other gods, gods of wood and stone. And you will become objects of horror and scorn and cause of ridicule among all the people to whom Jehovah derives you. Why? Well, because... He had told them not to do it. He hates idol worship. That was the, go back and look at the so-called Ten Commandments. He makes it quite clear. I went too far. Oh, God. Give me a second. I got to find it. Hold on. I should have known where it is. That's my fault. Thinking of, sorry. Give me. I had to turn off the voice recognition. That's my fault. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I had the wrong set of scriptures in my head. The numbers had them transpose so not 28 but 30 but if your heart turns away and you do not listen and are enticed and bow down to other gods and serve them i tell you today that you will certainly perish you will not live long in the land that you are crossing the jordan to possess people say he was a god of vengeance no he wasn't he was a God that got rid of all the pagan worship in the land. He wasn't being vengeful. He was sticking to who he was, getting rid of all the false gods because he didn't create us to serve false gods. I take the heavens and the earth as a witness against you today that I have put life and death before you, not, not free will. The blessings and the curse and you must choose life so that you live, you and your descendants, by loving Jehovah your God, by listening to his voice and by sticking to him, for he is your life, and by him you will endure a long time in the land that Jehovah swore to give to your forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ladies and gentlemen, he gave them a choice, but he did say if they wanted to live, they must choose life. If they don't want to live, then they don't have to choose life. See how simple that is? You can't get more simple than that. So this is why I've chosen to serve Jehovah, because he's the only God who offers life. Every other God, you got to die in order to get a reward. He's saying we can choose life and we don't have to die. So I choose him. I don't know what you choose, but the truth is, that's your choice. Nobody controls it. You get to make that choice. Okay, you get to choose.
but it is about choice. That's why I say that's the one thing the Matrix got right. It has always been about choice. It has always been about choice. Adam and Eve, Eve could have chosen not to listen to the serpent. Adam could have chosen not to take the fruit from his wife. Cain could have chosen not to kill his brother. The angels could have chosen not to forsake their original dwelling place. See, he's given people the right to choose. Why? Because he's not the type of God who's going to force you to serve him. Then why would he? Why, why would he stomach that? Why would he stomach having disgruntled individuals serve him? It would make no sense. All right. So as I would say all the time, oh, and you'll notice on videos like this, when I'm talking about subjects like this concerning his word, you don't hear me playing any music in the background. No R&B, no RNG, no gospel, no, no gospel. Definitely. You never hear me play gospel. Anyway, no, um, no anything. Why? Now, if you find a video from time to time where I do that, you'll see that the conversation didn't start off that way. It ended up that way. But during that whole time, you don't hear me playing anything in the background. Sometimes I'll play just a softer instrumental, but that's it. Why? Out of respect. So, Pete Gang, gotta go.